So this is the second episode of the day and it is all about the Magic Weekend Day 1. A Saturday at St. James's Park held three Super League fixtures and they have massive computations in the way that Super League will fall out come the end of the season. Here are those three games. First of all, Wakefield Trinity face Toulouse at the early game, 12, uh, 2 30 kickoff, while St. Helens played Wigan Warriors at 4 45. And after that, the day one closes with Leeds Rhinos versus Castleford Tigers. And we'll go in game order with Toulouse looking to catch up to Wakefield Trinity as they face each other in game one. And so many ways that we can put this it's a must win game for both teams to lose can climb within two points of the team directly above them the wakefield trinity and um, while wakefield can move again away from uh to lose to keep their super league status intact for another year we don't need much build up to that because the game itself is going to be an absolute rip snort and we know it so here are the teams the away team officially first of all as we see one change in the backs as matty russell comes in for paul mark on uh after last week's victory against whole kr but otherwise it's as you were to keep the momentum going for this to lose side for trinity it may be a case of not many changes due to the fact that they have so many injuries. No Tom Johnson, so Carl Evans makes his second Super League appearance after his try scoring debut against Wigan last time out. While Lewis Murphy is on the other wing with Jack Croft and Corey Hall being the centre partnership this time. Mason Lino pulled out of the game on the last training session yesterday due to a calf issue so brad walker comes in at at, at half uh, standoff or scrum half whichever place you'd like to play tinny arona is playing his first game back after the short trip to the cook islands uh, for in australia for the uh international game but otherwise there's not much le uh Willie Poaching can do with his side due to the aforementioned injuries. <laughs> it was Wakefield who got over the try line first of all as Liam Hood scored the opening try as he went over from some lax defending behind the half back uh, behind the play of the ball. Great dive over and great vision from the uh, Wakefield of acting halfback. Following this, Wakefield went in again, and after a decent kick by Miller, which was knocked on into the in goal area by Tony Gigo, Matty Ashurst got on the end of it, and the whole KR second rower onside from the kick did indeed ground the ball for Wakefield's lead of 12 points to. Yes, 12 points to nil after Max Jowett converted both tries. Video referee confirmed the try after the ref sent it up as a try but needed to check. There was a third try as well for... Um, Wakefield before half time after Andrew Fafita went over on the 36th minute. While Joe Breverton went over for Toulouse only score of the half on the 26th minute. David Fafita did spend 10 minutes in the bin as well. Uh, as just on half time, he was pinged for holding down the man for too long. Well, here comes Toulouse as Lambert Belmas went over for the opening try in a quick fire spell, which saw Toulouse score quite a few points and play against 12 men for 20 minutes. 
great play there by um, Pete's and Belmas using the post as a foil to score an easy try. Tully's went in again after Matty Russell got on the end of a flowing move and the outside cutout ball by Corey Norman found Russell and the winger just went in easy. It was Ashot Bot actually who went who did the final pass. And here it is from another angle. Just a simple go to the line and pass out play. The fullback chiming in and Matty Russell going in. And it was game on. To lose, then were back up by another try. After a set up play once again, it was uh, from Corey Norman. It was fellow recent signee Nathan Peets who got the video ref decision about putting the ball down. Quick look by the video referee gave the try to Peets, and the comeback was on. And survival in Super League as well. There's the hand on top of the ball, which gave, swir, um, lent the decision in to lose his favour. There was a try before this as um, Shamkel went over for to lose, as it was. Oh, no, it's next try that is uh, Shamkel. After multiple looks by the video referee and the check-in, and now saying it was a try. Here is that Shamkel try. After Guy Armitage appeared to have the ball raped out, Shamkel played to the whistle, and the video referee was called into play it once again. This time, the try being sent up as a null try. But you can see Jacob Miller there rake the ball out. Shamkel cried to the whistle, picked it up. Liam Miller couldn't get the tackle in time, but the try was given, and Toulouse were now in the lead by six. And another man advantage, as Rob Butler was sent to the sim bin uh, for a dangerous tackle. He lifted a player up, a Toulouse player up, and dropped him on his head, basically. And uh, Toulouse made it count once more as Matty Russell went in for his second try. <laughs> it was a great move once again from the base of a scrum. Went through the hands of Corey Norman, Ashel Bott, and then a diving corner try for Matty Russell. Wakefield, though, did show a bit of heart after a uh, Max Jowett kit was picked up by Kalepi Tanganoa for a try for Wakefield as they were looking to get back into the game but with this clock ticking to 79 minutes it would need a miracle another try a converted try to go into golden point extra time as Toulouse led 32 points to six uh, 26 but from the kickoff the Hooter went now and that meant Wakefield threw the ball about and Guy Armitage got on the end of a loose pass to score the last try of the game to put Toulouse within two points of their rivals today and their nearest rivals on the league table. It was game over. And that is the score. Toulouse 38, Wakefield Trinity 26. And that's a way to make a start to a magic weekend as Wakefield Trinity are down by Toulouse 38 points to 26. Game 2 promises to be another dramaful game as Wigan Warriors face St. Helens in a local rivalry which St. Helens have got the best of over the last few years. Both teams come into it in reasonably good form. Um, Saints did lose last time out against Castellans Dragons, while Wigan Warriors um, defeated Wakefield at Bellevue. Anyway, here are the teams. For Saints this time, Will Hapoate returns to the starting lineup, but he is in place of Tommy Makinson, who drops out of the side with John Benison going into the wing position. 
Comrad Hurrell returns and with Sion and Metaltia in the centres. Regan Grace, fresh from the announcement that he is indeed moving to French Rugby Union, starts on the other wing. Lomax and Walsby are the halfbacks, but Ignatius passes starts as there is no Alex Wormsley in the starting lineup. Otherwise, it's as you were for Saints with Roby, Matty Lees, Curtis Surinan, Joe Batchelor, and Morgan Knowles completing the starting lineup. Joey Lussick looking to be explosive off the bench with Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook joining Jake Wingfield and Dan Norman on the bench. For the Warriors, Jai Fields and Bevan French both come in to their usual positions as Jai French is at full back with Bevan French back on the wing. Willie Iser and Jake Bibby are the centres with Liam Marshall on the other. That is because Kate Cust returns to the starting lineup for Wigan Warriors with Harry Smith in support. Brad Singleton and Liam Byrne are the starting forwards with Sam Powell at loose forward. Then it's Joe Shorex continuing in that loose forward position after his performance against Wakefield with Liam Marshall and John Bateman in its second row. On the bench, there's a return for Morgan Smithis. Oliver Partington, who is a subject of much transfer speculation, uh, is on the bench also, with Patrick Mango and Ethan Harvard completing a forward-filled bench. So early in the first half, it is all Saints. Norton stopped St. Helens' pressure on the Wigan defence, and they were keeping Wigan pinned in their own 20-metre line, and starting their sets on tackle one, either 50 or 40 metres out from the Wigan line culminating in closing out their sets close to the Wiggins line. The only scoring opportunity though of note was a penalty that was given to Saints and it was John Benison who decided to add two to give Saints the lead about 17 minutes gone. Um, but Saints had the possession and the momentum of the ball and they kept it going. That was until the 30th minute. Wigan got some field position and quickly shifted the ball to the right and a great cutout pass from Bevan Fre uh, from Jai Fields found Bevan French in the corner to score the opening try of the game. Great angles, great movement and a great pass by French which finished off the scoring of uh, movements that was involving Field, French and the miss out ball of, of Willie Ice. Wigan thought they were in again, and after the Kate Cuss kicked forward the ball, and Powell again, and getting the ball down, the video referee went to look at the whole incident, as it was decided that Bevan, that Powell did not get the ball down due to being offside there, with the kick from Bateman as well. Buoyed by their first half play, Wigan decided to go on the attack in the second and a kick back inside from Bevan French finds John Bateman who scoops over for the opening try of the half. It's a wonderful kick by, Jai, uh, by Bevan French as well. Watch how it bounces. It bounces perfectly for Bateman. The belly of the ball lands there and it just bounces up like a football would do. And he just gathers it and scores his try another angle of that watch might not be able to see the bounce off this kick but it's perfect for Bateman point towards the try line Saints attack down the right and their second row England international Jane, Joe Batchelor gets over the try line and dots the ball down off his own kick fantastic effort from the Saints man After, on the last tackle Wellsby runs right with Batchelor hanging out on the wing and they overload the Wigan left at side defence with the winger and the marker, the centre at markers and um, overshooting Wellsby. And then Bachelor did the rest to score. Saints then went in again to close down the scoring to 16 points to 10, as it was Jack Wellsby who scored on the left side of the pitch in one that no media outlet wants to show again as there was a possible knock-on knock by Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook in the build-up. Possible, not 100%, but it's one of those contentious decisions that they don't want going back on the officials. Fair play, 
who want to protect the officials, but they need to be held accountable sometimes when they got a mistake wrong, if indeed that was the case. Which makes it two contentious decisions in not short span of time. This time it was against Wigan. In a, after Curtis Surinan got the ball there and then Matty Lees ran the ball in, it was a second run of the set for Curtis Surinan coming up. It was a slow play of the ball, and after the ball was handed out to Surinan, the shifting Wigan defence came across, and a hit on Surinan left him down a little bit. His teammates weren't too better, but weren't too concerned really. Just thought it was play acting a little, but Surinan was groggy. And after consulting with the review, uh, the video referee, there was a decision coming, and they reached to the back pocket. Oh, now, if we thought it was going to be a yellow card for the incident, but Brad Singleton received a red. First red since the Salford, uh, the whole KR man was sent off against Salford for that clothesline back in the day. Adam something or other, I can't remember. But here's that incident again. Surinan comes in, he's getting tackled, goes down, and he's clobbered at the back of his head from Singleton. Contact with the head means that you go and sit down. But I'm not sure that this was more than a yellow. Tell me in the comments below. But this didn't deter Wigan, as on the last, Bevan, um, Jai Fields found some space in behind and kicks forward for Bevan French. He gets the ball, skips around Jax Wellsby, literally, and puts the ball down before Regan Grace gets to him. And Wigan have extended their lead yet again. And now it's 20 points to 10. Video referee checked for the onside offside, clearly onside there. And French, all, all that they had to check for him was the touchline. Because of his leap, he gets out of the way. And then his touch, his put down of the ball, which was confirmed by the video referee as a try. With the Saints in dominant position as we get to the 73rd minute of the game and after an initial run from dummy heart from Darcy Lussick Saints decide to go left quite obvious they were going to go left because Wellsby was there at the ball but Lomax finds the ball for Will Hapuate and Regan Grace to go in in the corner which was still a bad angle for Saints as it was 18 points to 6 to Wigan 16 to Wigan Regan Grace tried to alter the angle, but unfortunately John Benison missed the kick due to Jai Field getting round. But like in the 2020 Grand Final, Saints attack from the their own half. And after Joe Batchelor threw a dummy which Liam Marshall fed, it was down to a try for Johnny Lomax, who finishes the game. And the victory goes to Saints. It was a great run by Joe Batchelor. It was a bad miss and bad read by Liam Marshall on the edge. He should have just took the ball on the man early on. Batchelor's running at him. He's running back. He's running back. and He should have went for the man. He was too bothered about the pass out wide. But with it all said and done, St. Helens come away with a victory. And it is a 20 points to 18 win over their near rivals in the league and also geographically and the final game of the day saw Leeds Rhinos take on Castleford Tigers in a local-ish derby which has a little bit of bite through historical clashes Castleford are buoyed by some decent results recently and winning last time out and Leeds are also in a, a good place after their mauling of Hull FC the last time out. It is going to be an interesting one to find out who's going to win. But at this point, I'm one for one in my predictions. So I'll leave these two to knot it out so that we can enjoy the game. Anyway, here come the teams. Leeds are without some key players for this match as they seem to be throughout the season. Cruz Leeming is sidelined for the game, as is Harry Newman, Paul Dean Thompson, and Zane Tetavano. 
So that looks like uh, Davy Fusitua comes back into the side with Liam Sutcliffe and Zach Hardacre at centres, Ash Anley on the other side. Corey Johnson plays halfback instead of uh, Blake Austin. That's half at dummy half. We've got Jared O'Connor playing in place of the missing uh, Cruz Lehman, while James Bentley, Reese Martin, and Cameron Smith continue in the loop in the back row forwards position. Brad Dwyer, James Donaldson, Morgan Gannon, and Sam Walters are all on the bench. For Castleford, they'll be buoyed by the return of Alex Meller and Liam Watts to their squad, but they too have a trio of big names that are missing. Paul McShane and Nathan Massey are suspended, and Jake Truman is done for the season, which isn't ideal. That means the returning Niall Evelds comes into the starting lineup, with Greg Edens looking like he's going to go at half back, but I reckon them two will switch predominantly throughout the game. Adam Milner comes in at uh, dummy half, while George Lawler is backed up by uh, Kenny Edwards, who's having a wow of a season, Alex Meller, and Joe Westerman. Daniel Smith, Sue Matagi, Liam Watts, and Brad Martin complete the bench for the Tigers. It was Leeds who got over the try line first as Matt Pryor took a short ball and bundled his way backwards over the line to get the first points of the game. Ball became six as Reese Martin extended the lead after this forwards try from Matt Pryor. Ball became six after uh, for Castle, uh, Castleford as some good ball movement saw Beretta Faraimo uh, kick back inside for Jake Marmo to score his first try since returning back to the team. The video referee was asked to check for the touchline if Faraimo went into touch, but it was given as a try. Let's have a look at it again. The ball was shipped out wide by uh, Richardson and O'Brien. Brimo kicked back inside, and Marmo did the easy thing to pick up and score. Better view of it to make sure that we're not make, uh, making it up about him not going into touch. Very well played. And the American international fed the Australian for the next try. Castleford were camped in the Leeds half after this, and Marmo um, was tackled just short of the line, which gave Barreto Farimo a bit of an idea. To dive over from close range, which again was referred to the video ref well was given by the referee for the second try of Cassie's match. This was not converted this time, so it was ten points to six to Castleford. Great work by the winger, making a good point a good case for him to play uh, acting halfback at some point. The winger was too powerful to stop. Cats led at half time, but Leeds came roaring back. They were camped in the Castleford half, and the ball was flung out wide after a couple of setup plays from the Leeds forwards. On the last, the Cherry Duck Connor finds Aiden Caesar, who went out to Liam Sutcliffe, who gave Ash Anley is 100 try in Super League. Just the switch removed to the left hand side and the winger did the rest. Join in the man. Simple. Simple play. Dummy runner. Miss out pass. Then a sweet hand on. Reese Martin made it 12 10, but it was Leeds in once more. After. Castleford were finding it difficult to put the Leeds men on the ground. Brad Dwyer schemed from halfback and Aidan Caesar found a gap in the Castleford defence behind the play of the ball to get himself over for another Leeds try. The Leeds halfbacks have been hit and miss this year, but Aidan Caesar getting over as Rowan Smith's Leeds side are starting to click together. And getting around the rook seems to be fast play the balls for Leeds Rhinos. And Alex uh, Liam Sutcliffe kick.
kicked the ball out wide for Richie Myler, who got on the end of that flowing move to score a wonderful try for Leeds Rhinos. As Leeds went in 22 points to 10 in the lead with this try. It was a nice throwing move, keeping it tight towards the halfbacks. And Miley chimed in the line, creating an overlap. Liam Sutcliffe using his pace and power. And then his ability to kick forward for Myla to get on the end to score that wonderful try. Leeds started turning the screw and Cameron Smith short ball to his second row partner James Bentley put an exclamation mark on Leeds dominance this early in the game. We're only at the 62nd minute mark and it's 26 points to 10. That will be made 28 points to 10 with Reese Martin's conversion. But a great line from James Bentley to score Leeds try again. Good line, good short ball and he's happy scoring that try. Leeds final try came on the 69th minute as Liam Sutcliffe got on the end of a flowing move and he used his strength to power over through Jake Marmo to score on the 69th minute. Rhys Martin had the extras and it was 34 points to 10. It was just quick movement, power and pace, good half back play. That saw Sutcliffe and Caesar link up for the former score on the line. Cass finally got some momentum in the second half and on the 71st minute, Nala Valds and Jake Marmo found Beretta Faraimo, who dove over in the corner for his second try of the game. Video referee checked it after the referee said that it was a try on field and there was no touch given. So, the try stood. Castleford were back in the game, 38 points to 14. Just simple pressure, moving the ball, getting to the line and passing it on to the next man, creating an overlap for the try. The last say of the game did go to Beretta Faraimo as he scored a hat-trick and Danny Richardson converted, but it still wasn't enough as Leeds Rhinos came out winners, 34 points to 20. And after day one, here are the final scores. Wakefield Trinity 26, Toulouse Olympic 38, St. Helens 20, Wigan Warriors 18, Leeds Rhinos 34, Castleford Tigers 20. And this is what it means to the table after day one. St. Helens lead the way by four points once again, but that could be, well, that will stay the same no matter what happens in the next day's games. Wigan Warriors still in second place, but could be overtaken on points difference if Catalans win by 14 points or uh, 16 points or more. Huddersfield Giants could be back to one point behind Wigan after this result. With Castleford Tigers now facing downwards as Hull FC have got to play Hull KR and Leeds are just within three points with them. Salford Red Devils and Hull KR are on 14 with Warrington Wolves on 12. But look at that at the bottom of the table. Two weeks ago, the gap was six points. Now it's down to two. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking that notification bell for any updates on new videos that may be coming your way. Tell me what your thoughts are of today's games. Uh, do you think that uh, everyone who won will value for their win? The close one between Saints and Wigan, I must admit, I did pick Wigan to win, but Saints just kept plowing forward, plowing forward, keeping the field position. Then produce some moments of quality, which you can't deny what they did. Great game, and they were better for it. Still not sure the red card for Singleton deserved more than a yellow, but it is what it is. Just one of those things. And Leeds coming into form, coming to the end of the season. Can they get into the top six with that win? And will they dent to lose his um, efforts to get closer to Wakefield next weekend? We'll see when that comes about. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. But in the meantime, please stay safe. I wish you all the best. And I'll see you tomorrow in more Rugby League.